Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create book charms. Now these can be used as charms as I said before. You can also use them as bookmarks, you can use them as pendants and a whole bunch of things. So let me just bring over some that I've done already as you can see here. And these pendants are actually from a while back. I made them about three years ago, three to four years ago. And I thought that that would be a fun little project that I could bring out. So let's get started. Now I've got a few colours here that I've just mixed up. I've also pulled out a few from my archives where um, I didn't remember to write down the colour recipe. So any colour will work. Um, this is a gold mixed with bronze colour recipe. This is a green mixed with gold colour recipe. This is a red mixed with gold colour recipe. And this is a blue mixed with purple and white. So mess around and see what you can get. You're also going to need white for each one of your colours. Now I do have some measurements here. And so the inside, which is the white here, it needs to be 2cm by 3cm and 3mm thick. The outside needs to be 35 centimeters by 5.2 centimeters and that it will be two millimeters thick so for those of you that wanted the um, measurements so I'll put the white aside for the moment right now we are going to texture our colors of clay now you can use any texture you want I want a really subtle texture and I have these pieces of scrap paper lying around as you can see they've got a nice texture to them and so I thought that would be really cool to use so I've picked out a few those are the ones that I don't want to use if I bring these over you can see I have a nice one and this one I've chosen to do with the blue for kind of a denim -y look um, this one I've also chosen you can see that one's quite a nice one and then I have one more back here and this one's a little bit more coarse so those are the textures that I have chosen so let me just move each of these out of the way so that I'm not going to be accidentally texturing the wrong one and don't worry about the stores here at the moment we've trimmed it basically to the right size but when we texture it's going to go a little bit out of shape and I can just gently trim down the edges so I'm just taking the paper and I'm gently rubbing it onto the clay. I want a fairly light texture, I don't want it a really strong texture so I'm not going to be using my roller. There, you can see we have gotten quite a light texture. And then I'm just going to gently rub that over the other one so that it just gives it a little bit more of a furry look. Okay, and I've just picked up a little hair there I want to just get rid of that there we go I'll just smooth that over and you can use any texture you have lying around the house so play around with it and see what you can get okay then just trim these edges so that they're straight again. You won't, if you're burnishing and not running it through the pasta machine, um, you won't need to trim away much. You just need to sharpen up those edges, which will have um, just distorted a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that's our first one. Pop that over there. Let's bring over this red one. And I want to give this one a nice coarse texture. So another idea that you could use, you could take some foil out of your kitchen cupboard, scrunch that up and use that as a texture. That would work really well. Um, any baskets that you have, you could uh, press the clay up against that. You would need to trim it properly after texturing it. So. I've trimmed these already, but if you were going to do something like a basket knit where you have to take the clay and press it in, um, you would probably want to trim it after you have textured it. 
So that's another one that you could use. Um, let's see. String would also be quite interesting. Maybe if you rolled a piece of string across the edge of the clay, that could also give you a fairly interesting texture. Um, if you have kids, um, check out any plastic animals toys that they have. Um, I find that a lot of those um, sort of toys have cool texture on there. So you can play around with that. Just go and have a look around your house and you can find any texture you need. Okay. So that gave a slightly different texture. And you can skip forward if you want. This is a little bit boring for you, but I want to show you each of the textures. So I can also use my roller to gently burnish. And there, that one's giving me almost a basket sort of a look. Just gently pressing this back into the right shape. Okay, last one. You might even be able to use cloths if you have like tea towels and things like that. I find they've got a cool texture that you could use as well. Okay. And this one I'm kind of moving it around so that I get an interesting texture. Let me just quickly press this back into the right shape. There we go. Okay. So, turn these the other way around now. And what you want to do is you want to fold them in half. And do this carefully because you don't, you want to do this so that you end up with a rounded edge down this end. You don't want to do that so you're splitting the clay. And don't press too hard because you're just trying to get the middle. So this is the book cover. So you can see. And then let me just position it like this so that you can see what I'm doing. Bring over one of your white pieces. And now this is a nice project to use a piece of white that isn't pure white or has little bits of lint and dirt on it because um, it's not really going to matter because you're not going to see much of the white. So here we are. A piece of white. I'm going to position that somewhat in the middle. And then bring that back around, just like that. And then gently, gently, gently press. You don't want to be distorting your texture. And then press on these ends just to flatten out any little bumps that you might have. Okay, and there's the outside of your book. So, pretty simple so far. I'm going to do the same for all of the other ones. And then when I've done that, we can start embellishing. Okay, so here they are, now that I have finished folding them over. And they're okay at the moment, but they look a little plain. You could keep them like this if you wanted to, but I'm going to add a few details now. And we're going to embellish them too. So, first thing you want to do is you want to take your blade and just on this paper white area, take your blade and gently score along the edges of the white. And this will make it look like pages. And you will do that on each side of the white. Just be careful not to cut the outside. But this is a nice little detail that makes it look quite real. There we go. 
and finally on the other side. There we go, basically done. And you can do that as much as you want until you're happy. But there you are, it looks like it's got pages. Hope the camera can pick that up. Not sure if it can. But anyway, there we go. I'll do that with the other ones. But in the meantime, I want to embellish this one. So I'm going to bring over a ball tool and a piercing pin. And I want to mark a line across here. Just like that. And I just want to hollow it out just a tad. Then I'm going to take my ball tool and I'm going to gently press dots along the side. You don't have to do it for the other side if you don't want to. One side will do. Okay. Then I want to... Let's see. Make a second line. I'm just holding these edges so I don't bevel out. And then I'll just go up. Okay, and then we can put something in there. So I'm going to bring over. And some embellishments. Now this actually is a bead cap that I squished flat. So I'm just going to pop in the middle. Oh, actually, I want to centre that. And let's see what else I've got in here. Hmm. Don't have anything in there. Let's see. I've got a little bit of cogs here. So let's see if I can find anything interesting in here to put there. So you can go through all your little bits and pieces in your embellishment straws and things like that and see if you can find anything. And then just play around with it as you like. Let's see, no, I don't like that. So I'll dig around in here and find something that I like. Okay, so I found some pieces. I also cut out a little square. And I'll show you what I want to do with that in a minute. But I do want to just press some holes into here. There we go. Okay. 
Now just pop this little square onto here. And then grab that. Get it into the middle. have this other little piece sitting over here okay and there we are that should be fine now I'm just going to smooth off on these edges again oops that one fell up we're going to have to seal them in so I'll press that one back into place put that one to the side and we'll start on the next one and this one I got the line a little wonky on the last one so I'm actually going to use a ruler to help me with this one it's okay if you've got the line wonky it's not incredibly problematic but I would like to get the line down the middle over here straight so I'm gonna just use a ruler to help me with it there we go don't worry if you didn't get it straight that's fine but if you can get it straight that would be best a small line of little ball tools, little ball marks up the side. Yeah. And then I want to have little things on the corner here. So what I'm going to do is, let's see. Does that, look, that actually looks quite nice, so I think I'm going to do that. Pick that up, and I want to run this through on my thinnest setting. Get it as thin as you can. There we go. I'll just lay the book on there. From these edges. There we go. Move the book. And then my head needs to get here so I can see. Just cut out a triangle like that. And take each. This is a little finicky, but not hard. Just get them onto the outside of your book. Now you can spend as long as you want making these little books. You can make each one different. You can have quite a bit of fun with them. Just gently use my blade to press along these edges just so that they stay in the right spot. There we are. And then just smooth so that your fingerprints are gone. 
there we go got those two edge pieces and then I would like to bring over a little piercing pin and gently do kind of wobbly lines if you do wobbly lines it means you don't have to worry too much about getting them straight so it'll be nice and easy for you And just go back and deepen them a little bit so that they're obvious. Okay. And then just press on the outside to smooth. Okay. And then I'm going to bring over those little brass pieces again. And if you have a bunch of bead caps, go and play around with them and flatten them out and see what you can come out with. A lot of them create really cool embellishments. As you can see. I'm just tapping them in. Okay. And there is another one. And all we need to do now is just gently smooth along the sides. Because you might have little fingerprints on there. There we go. It's the next one. Put that to the side. We'll do the next one. Now for this one, I want some silver bead caps or um, dark-ish silver. And I thought I'd show you how you flatten it out. You need something that isn't going to crack if you try to flatten it. Some bead caps will split and crack and all sorts of things. So just make sure that your bead cap's okay before you do this. Then you'll take a plier and you'll gently start pressing. Don't press really hard all at once, it takes a little while for it to flatten. Rotate, squish, rotate, squish. And just carry on doing this until it flattens. It takes a little while to coax it, but if you try to squish it all at once, it will crack. There we are, and you can see that that one's flat. And there we are, really nice component now. Here's a smaller one, again, okay, insert it. Squish a little and continue rotating. And there you are. And just check for any cracks because sometimes it can crack. That one's fine though. There you are. Okay, so those are good to use. Now, for this one, I'm going to be using a ruler again. that process a lot easier. And I'm just going to go back and make sure that's deep enough. It's really these ends that you just need to make sure that you get. There we go. I'll leave that for the moment. Then I will need my ball tool and I'm actually going to be going along the inside this time around. And I'm going to be making a frame. Just 
just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this around so it's a bigger ball tool. And I'm going to go around the outside, or inside actually. Create another border of sorts. And this is a really easy project because it doesn't matter if you don't get everything symmetrical. You can try to do that if you want, but they turn out just fine without you doing it symmetrically. So it's really fun, easy, quick, and looks cute. Great presents. Okay, so I've made a border. Then I want to go around the inside. And use the ball tool to create texture. Um, go and have a look on Pinterest for diaries or journals or even notebooks really. Have a look at that and see what sort of styles you can find. There's lots and lots of different designs so if you're having trouble coming up with some ideas you can have a check out there and there's lots of different designs that you can play around with. So I'm almost done here. Just make sure it looks well textured. Okay. Then I think I'm gonna I think that might be too large actually. Looks a little large. So I'll grab this smaller one and I'll put that in the middle. Okay. Then clay and this one I think we're going to make some use some mica powders grab some clay roll this into a little sausage just trying to get that to be about the same width the whole way along then I'm just gonna use this to quickly get rid of those ends Then taper one of those ends. And this is a little fiddly. I want to curl it. And now I'm going to take this blade, and now I'm not going to cut it. I'm just creating some texture. I'm going to go up the length and do these little lines. You could use a ball tool too. That would work just as well. And I'm probably going to be dusting this with some silver mica powder. Another piece. There we go. And I don't need much, just need a small amount. 
it's got a little bubble in there so if there's a little bubble just roll it up again and then roll out again and what I want to do is I want to create a little circle around that and once you've got that rolled out just trim those ends I'm going to use my blade to help me here. Get into the right spot. And actually, I've got a better idea. Let me just taper this one end. Trying to get into the right spot. And there. Down. Curl it around. Then bring it up. That. I'm not used to working with tiny little things. I'm pretty sure some of you are a lot better at this than me. There we go. Just need to trim that little end. Let's see, am I happy with that? Just go gently roll it out a little bit, give that finding a little bit more space in there. Okay, and I'm gently going to smooth that seam. Alright, I'm happy with that. Then I'll grab my little blade and do the same texture that I did on the other one. Okay, and now I just want to add one final little touch. I've got a little spiral here. I just want it to sit there. And I'll put the same texture in. Okay. Now gently pick that up and it actually is stuck to the tile. So I'll use my blade. There we are. And I'm going to smooth these ends. That's the next one done. Finally, we have this one. Again, I'm going to use a ruler. Grab my ball tool. Gently tap that in. Then, I think I'll 
I want to do. So I'm going to do lines across like this. Just slight lines. And then use my ball tool to go inside those lines. like this okay and the next step is for us to take the ones that we want to put mica powder on and dust them over I think I might want a little brass one in there. In there. And then just use your little ball tool to press those in. Okay, pick that up. Smooth your edges. And that's it for now. So let me just bring all of those over so you can see what we have. I'll actually turn them around so you can see what they look like. Cute little diaries. There we are. Now I'll bring over some mica powder. And there's only one that I want to put mica powder on. The others some of them I want to leave as is, and then others I might antique, actually, after baking. So I've got some silver mica powder here. I'm just going to be painting inside this little square over here where the ball tools are. And now I'm using a really tiny brush. And now the reason I'm doing the mica powder after I put all the components on, because you might think it'll be easier to put the mica powder on before you put the components in. The reason I'm doing it now is because the mica powder acts as a release agent. And so you'll find that your components don't want to stick if you've already put the mica powder on. There we are. Just take your time, enjoy the process, it'll look light, nice afterwards. And now, when we're done doing this, I'm going to bake my pieces and I'm going to bake them at Primo's recommended temperature for a full hour to make sure that they're all good to go. So, I'm going to do those all, I'm going to pattern those leaves, oh, excuse me, pages before I bake them. I showed you the one, I need to do the others still. But I'll just continue painting and then I'll show you what to do next. There we are. Got a nice little silver frame. So a few of these I'm probably going to want to antique. I think this one I might do in like black paint. This one I'm thinking a goldish paint. This one I'm thinking a dark brown. And this one I'm thinking like a dark silver colour maybe. But we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go pop them in the oven at most recommended temperature for a full hour now when you're baking you want to have them on a ceramic tile like this with a piece of paper over the top rest them on the piece of paper and then put another piece of plain printing paper over the top of them and this will help keep the oven temperature level which is what the ceramic tile does and it will also prevent it from scorching okay so I've baked them and I've given them some time to cool off 
And so here are our little books. And I'm quite happy with how they have turned out. So I've picked out the paints that I want to use. I'm using Americana Black. And then I'm using Dazzling Metallics Rich Espresso, Splendid Gold, and Shimmering Silver. Okay. So this one I'm going to be doing in black. This one I'm going to be doing in that kind of brown sort of a colour. This one's going to be gold and this one's going to be a dark silver. So let's do this one first. Grab my black. And you also need a wet wipe. Okay. So I'll just open up the black. I'm going to squeeze a smallish amount onto my tile. I'm going to take that and I'm going to pounce it into my texture. Now if that happens, just remove the finding and we'll stick it back on in just a minute. It's really easy to stick them back on. Just continue moving it around and make sure that you get in all of those areas where you and they have texture. And if your finding survives this, it should be fine. Okay. And I'm also going to just paint the back here as well. Careful not to get on your white pages. If you get on the edge here, it's fine because we can clean that off, but don't be going and deliberately antiquing the edges because then you're at risk of. Um, painting your white pages and most books unless they're really old and someone didn't look after them properly won't have black on their pages. Okay, make sure you got everywhere. Okay, I'll move the brush. Okay, and I'll just clean up that black for the most part. And then I'm gonna use a cloth. You can use a wet wipe too and I'm gonna there, that one came off as well. That's fine. If it survives this process, then it's perfectly well stuck. But if it doesn't, then you're going to have to stick it back on, which is really easy, so don't worry about it. Okay, and just take your cloth and rub. And this is why I'm saying the findings will be perfectly fine if they survive this, because it will be fairly rough to get rid of the um, paint. And now because you're just rubbing it, it's only going to get rid of the paint on the surface. It's not going to get rid of it when it's in the cracks. Then I'll just rub the back to get rid of it. And so it's going to highlight that texture a little bit. Okay. Okay. And then these sides, go and rub that against your cloth too and you should get rid of most of it and yes this is an old cloth if you were wondering okay and then if you're struggling to get rid of anything what you can do is you can take a bottle of water I store it in this pot and just tip a little bit onto a cloth and just make sure it's not too wet you want it to be damp and then you can go and wipe the surface and this will really clean it up and this is how it's going to look once we've varnished it because the water makes it go the same color there or once we put the shiny varnish on it looks really nice so just clean up those edges Get rid of any little black paint pieces, and that's how you antique. Super easy. And I'm just cleaning in around these edges of this little cube. Okay, I'll put that off to the side. You'll clean up your area, and then you'll antique these ones. Now, I'm going to antique this one with the uh, Rich Espresso. 
I'm going to take this one with this blended gold. And then this one I'm going to mix a small amount of black into the blended silver and then I'll antique that. And it's the exact same process as what we did to this one. Okay, all finished. So here they are. You can see they're quite plain without the embellishments. This one, the embellishment did survive, as you can see. So that one's fine. I'll put that off to the side. These ones, however, we do need to stick the embellishments back on. So, this one, we have these embellishments. And if you've got a little bit of paint on them, you can just gently clean them off by rubbing them on your cloth. And that should clean it off just fine. Alright. So, you're going to need some liquid clay and a brush. I've got the stiff brush. It's one of my old brushes where I forgot to, to uh, rinse the paint off, but I've decided to keep it stiff like this because it makes a great brush for picking up a tiny amount of liquid clay. Dabbing that into place. And this is translucent Kato. And I'm just going to dab those into place. And then I'm going to, instead of dabbing onto the book, I'm going to just take my bottle, just squeeze a bit onto my actual metal piece and then pop that down and then I'm going to gently hook those pieces back into place Just gonna put a little bit more liquid cloud to that one. Just in the hole there. Do the same for this one too. There. Okay, then you'll either bake that or you can use a heat gun. I'm gonna use a heat gun. But if you were to bake it, just bake it for another half an hour at pretty much a committed temperature. So you'll set your heat gun on your hottest setting and your lowest wind speed and just cure it. Okay, and so there they are. I've done the same procedure for both of those so that the liquid clay um, has attached the findings to the book. And so now we are ready to start varnishing them. So I'll put these aside for a minute and I'll bring over our varnish. Okay, but before we varnish, we want to drill them. So you need to decide where you want to drill these pieces. I like to drill it in that sort of a manner. So I like to start at the fold and gently start drilling and then point my drill upwards. And then it should break through after a little bit of drilling. Just check every now and then. There we go. Easy enough. And we can make that hole bigger later on. But for a moment, I just want to put this hole in because it's going to help us with our varnishing. And now you don't even need to put this hole in. If you plan to do a magnet and just have the side side showing and putting the magnet on that side, it'll be fine. You would just varnish this top side. But because I want to use it as a pendant, I uh, want a hole there. I'll do the same for the others too. Okay, so I've drilled them. Now I need a piece of wire. And I'm just going to thread that. Let's do this one. This one's actually my favourite out of all of them. Closely followed by that green one. And I'm just going to twist off this end and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this into the varnish and then I'm going to go and 
wrap that around something so that it can hang and dry. Now, I'm going to be using Varathane and I have a nice big tub of that. Okay, now if you hear anything in the background, I'm having a thunderstorm at the moment. So if you hear any crashes and booms, that's because it really is currently thundering. So here's my uh, pot of varnish. And I will just lower my book into there and then just let it sit for a second. Maybe swirl it around just to make sure that, that varnish gets in where it needs to get in. Lift it and then just hold it with just its one end sitting in the varnish and this will help draw off a lot of the excess varnish. And just twist it around. There you can see that it's quite thundery out there at the moment. Okay. And then what I might do is I might just bring over a brush and blow on it just to get rid of any little excess bits and pieces. Because you don't want drips. Okay. And then once I'm happy with it, happy that I have gotten a good cover, I'll go and hang this up on something with a tissue underneath so that the uh, varnish doesn't get everywhere and then I'll let that dry for 24 hours because you just want to make sure that it is properly cured. You can do a second coat afterwards if you want to but I think it will be fine with just one coat and I'll do that with all the other books as well. Okay so they've been curing roughly around 10 hours now um, and they seem to have cured just fine so you, whenever they're completely dry then you can start to use them. So I'd use them 20, leave them to dry 24 hours before actually wearing them but as far as being able to um, string them and finish off the project uh, you can wait about 10 hours and they should be fine. So you can see it's got a nice shine to it. It's still picked up that texture, it's almost highlighted the texture which is nice. As you can see. And that will trap in that paint so you don't have to worry about it um, peeling off or anything like that. It will also have sealed in those findings a bit more as well. So I'm just going to string one and I think I'm going to be stringing the blue one. These ones I'm just going to leave for the moment because I'm actually going to be selling them in a D stash and I don't generally sell them as necklaces. If any of you would like to purchase them on Etsy as a necklace let me know and I will turn them into necklaces. Okay so you're going to need a cord and I've chosen this nice bug tail I do believe. And I'm just going to use one of these crimps, and I've got this from Fire Mountain Gems. And all you need to do is just squish that, and that will fit really nicely onto the end of your cord. Grab a jump ring and half your clasp, pop that on. Oh wait, I think this is actually called wax cotton if I'm not mistaken. Alright, um, I need to drill out this hole a little bit more. So let me just bring over my drill for that. Okay. All you do is just have a bigger drill bit. And drill through. Just go through a few times that you can clean out that area and make it nice and clean. There we are. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim off this end so that it's nice and sharp. And thread that through. And this cork can be a little stubborn sometimes because it's not very hard. So if it's not going through easily just grab your drill 
and hollow it out some more. Okay, so I hollowed it out a little bit more. And there we are. And that's going to hang nicely on there. Okay, then you'll grab your other little crimp. You can see there it's giving trouble again. So what I'd advise is making your cord just a tad longer than what it needs to be so that you're not going so that if it's giving trouble, like it starts fraying at one end, you can just trim it off and try again. And I do this a lot with soft cords. Uh, something like leather doesn't do that. Um, but this one does do it a little bit. There, and I'll just squish that. Grab a jump ring. Put it on my clasp. Pop the jump ring through the loop. Close. And there is your necklace. And you can see that my clasp, clasp has kind of the same dimpled pattern that it does in the pendant. And there we are. And that's a really nice uh, pendant. You can use that as a gift for anyone that you want. You could turn it into a fridge magnet by just sticking a little magnet on the back now if you wanted to. Um, there's quite a few things that you could do. This would actually be a really nice bookmark. What you could do is instead of doing a hole here, you could make the hole. Here, let me point to it with my drill. You could make the hole down here. I'm not sure if you can see it's over there, but the hole uh, between the white and the actual cover, you could make that a little bit bigger. And you could thread a ribbon through there and tie a little bead off at the bottom. And then you could use that as a bookmark in a way. And that would make a really nice bookmark. So let me just bring over some others that I've made already. So that you can see some examples. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different designs that you could make. So go crazy with it and have fun. There's plenty of things you can do and it's really fun to make. So... I do hope that that tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know. This is a beginning tutorial so for those of you starting polymer clay this is a great tutorial to start with. If you have any jewellery supplies as you can see you can use it on your um, pieces, cogs and all sorts of things, shells, little pieces of stone, you can all use it. Any textures around the house would be worth using. Uh, you only need a tissue blade and a roller. Um, you don't really need a pasta machine. You can do that by hand with a roller, but it is a lot easier to use a pasta machine. So you need very bare minimum materials, and the rest you can generally find around the house. So if you find that helpful, please let me know. And if you would like more simple projects like this one, please do let me know. I am planning to do a few, and if they're popular, I will be doing quite a few. So let me know about that. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.